In this lecture video, we are going to talk about the software requirements document. The software requirements document is sometimes called as the software requirements specification, abbreviated as SRS. It is an official statement of what the system developers should implement, the exact features. It may also include user requirements for a system and the detailed specification of the system requirements. We have already learned what is the difference between user requirements and system requirements. Sometimes the user and the system requirements are integrated into one single description. In other cases, user requirements are defined in an introduction to the system requirements specification. If there are a large number of requirements, the detailed system requirements may be presented in a separate document. The SRS is essential when an outside contractor is developing the software system. Let us consider agile development methods. These are the software development methods that incorporate changing customer needs. So agile development methods argue that the requirements change so rapidly that building a requirements document becomes out of date as soon as the document is written. So the entire effort for building this document with such detailing is largely wasted. Rather than a formal requirement document, approaches such as extreme programming collect user requirements incrementally and write these requirements on cards as user stories. The user then prioritizes which requirements are due for implementation in the next iteration or next increment. Consider business systems. For business systems, requirements are unstable. This approach is suitable for business system requirements development. However, it is still useful to write a short supporting document that defines the business and dependability requirements of the system. It is always easy to forget these requirements that apply to the system as a whole when focusing on functional requirements for the next system release as such. The requirements document has a diverse set of users. The users may range from senior management of the organization that is paying for the system to engineers responsible for developing the software. If you take a look at the table on the left-hand side of the slide, it will show you the possible users of the document and how they use this SRS. The diversity of possible users means that the requirements document or the SRS has to be a compromise between communicating the requirements to customers, defining the requirements in precise detail for developers and testers, including information about possible system evolution, and so on. Information on anticipated changes can help system designers avoid restrictive design decisions and help system maintenance engineers who have to adapt the system to new requirements. The level of detail that you should include in a requirements document also depends on the type of system that is being developed and the development process used. For example, critical systems need to have a detailed requirements because safety and security have to be analyzed in detail. When the system is to be developed by a separate company, that is through outsourcing, the system specification needs to be detailed and precise. If an in-house iterative development process is used, then the requirements document can be much less detailed and any ambiguity or clarification can be resolved during the development of the system. If you look at the tabular format here, you can see the variety of users. The users of the SRS could be system customers who will specify the requirements initially to the developer and then read the SRS to check if this is exactly what they wanted. The customers may also specify changes to the requirements. Then comes the managers. So these may use the requirements document to plan a bid for the system and plan the entire development process. 
They may not know anything about implementation, coding, and so on. Then come the system engineers who use the SRS to understand what features have to be developed and delivered to the customer. Then come the test engineers who use this SRS to develop validation tests for the system so they can check if the actual requirements are delivered in the system increments. Last comes the maintenance engineers who use the SRS to understand the system and the relationship between the different modules the system implements. The figure here, the table here on this slide shows one possible organization of the requirements document. And this is based on the IEEE standard for requirements document. This standard is a generic standard that can be adapted and modified to specific cases. You can see the different chapters in the SRS. It begins with the preface, which defines the expected readership of the documents. It describes the version history, the rationale for creating every version, the new version, summary of changes made in each version, and so on. The next chapter is introduction. This will describe the need for developing the system, the system functions, how the system interacts with other systems, how the system fits into the overall business, and so on. Next comes the glossary. This will define the technical terms used in the document. This is followed by the user requirements definition. This will describe the system services provided to the end user. The non-functional system requirements are also described here. As you already know, user requirements will be written in natural language diagrams, which are relevant to the user and makes it understandable to the end user who could be a non-technical layman. This is followed by the system architecture. Here, the high level view of the system that is to be developed is proposed. It shows the distribution of various functions, the different modules implementing the different requirements and so on. It also highlights the components that may be reused, that is the existing components or modifications made to the existing components. This is followed by the SRS, that is the system requirement specification. This will describe the functional and non-functional requirements of the system in more detail. This can be used by the developer to implement a system required by the customer. This is followed by system models. System models chapter will include graphical system models, which will show the relationship between the various system components, the components, the system, the environment, and so on. This is followed by the system evolution chapter, which will describe the fundamental assumptions on which the system is based. If any anticipated changes are there due to evolution of software, hardware, user needs, and so on, all will be documented here. This section becomes extremely useful to designers of the system. This is followed by appendices. This should provide detailed, specific information that is related to the application being developed. For example, hardware and database descriptions, and so on. Lastly, the index. Several indexes to the document may be included. It may be a normal alphabetic index. They may be an index of diagrams, an index of functions, and so on. So in this lecture video, we have understood what a system requirements document or an SRS will look like. A standard is defined by IEEE, but again, you can make changes, add, and remove whatever documents are or whatever sections are not required. It greatly depends on the type of software you're going to develop. We've also understood the diversity of users and how these users are going to use the SRS. Thank you.